This is Cerebral Cinema. Movies of the Mind. All right, folks, here we are. The high spot of our sightseeing tour, Chinatown. With the mystery of the Orient, the glamour of the Far East. Now let's step lively, that's right, folks. Our first stop is the Temple of Buddha, and then the Theater of the Orient with its delightful dancing girl. Hurry, Matilda. Hurry, we, we don't want to miss anything. Oh, there's no rush, Homer. Now let the others get out of the bus first. You wait for us. <laughs> you can't fool me, Homer Fostick. You want to see those dancing girls. <laughs> All right, Matilda. We can leave now. Oh, uh, what about this young man in front of us? He's asleep. I know. He slept through the better part of this tour. Well, let's wake him. I'm sure he doesn't want to miss any of Chinatown. Well, hey, young man, uh, wake up. We're in Chinatown. Homer, speak louder. Hey, shake him by the shoulder. Oh, wait till I get up. All right, young man. Oh, oh my, he's falling from his feet. Oh, catch him, Homer. Well, I, I, I can't. Oh, oh, Homer, there's something wrong with that young man. But you're right, Matilda. There is something wrong with him. Oh, my there's heaven. a knife in his chest. Oh, dear, dear. He, he's been oh. murdered. Oh, Want a beer with flavor? A flavor that's delightfully, deliciously different? Try that smooth beer. Try Champagne Velvet, the beer with the million-dollar flavor. Thank you, my friend, for a very happy suggestion. It's worth repeating. Try that smooth beer. But Champagne Velvet is more than just that. It's a beer with a rare and unusual flavor combination. It's bright and Buckling from foam to finish. It's light and lively with a clear, clean taste that makes you sure it's pure. And best of all, it has the rich, robust, and full-bodied flavor that stamps it as a beer of real premium quality. Premium quality that costs you no premium in price. Light and lively, bright and sparkling, yet just as smooth. What a flavor combination. And you're sure it's pure. And now on to Dick Calmer as Boston Blackie. Enemy to those who make him an enemy. Friend to those who have no friend. Oh, guys! Oh, guys! Oh, mister! Oh, mister! Oh, mister. Oh, mister. Oh, mister. Oh, mister. There's so much to see. We don't have too much guys. time. Oh, never mind about the tour. There's a dead man in the bus. Oh, oh, the what? That's right. He was he was sitting right in front of us, and somebody killed him. Yes. Are you kidding? No. Oh, instead of asking stupid questions, don't you think you should call the police? Yeah, yeah, sure. This is really a sightseeing tour. <laughs> Five dollars is the last bid for this lovely antique vase, ladies and gentlemen. Do I hear forty? Do I hear thirty-seven? Thirty-five dollars going once, going twice. Sold to the lovely lady in the green hat for thirty-five dollars. Now uh, the next item we have for your pleasure is an imported genuine. Oh, excuse me, just a minute, Paul. Excuse me. Uh, what is it? Uh, Beasy just came in. He says he's got to see you. I'll take over. Yeah. Okay. All right, folks. Now, the next item that we have for your pleasure is a genuine, imported... What's so important, please, eh? I got good news for you, Slocum. Okay, let's hear it. I found Joe Gates. Where is he? Oh, you don't have to worry about him. I spotted him getting on a sightseeing bus to Chinatown. Uh-huh. He didn't see me until I sat down next to him. Are you sure I don't uh, have to worry about him? Yeah, I'm positive. And I've been thinking... This job took me a little longer than I thought it would. So it should pay me a little more. I'm a reasonable man, BZ. How much more? thousand dollars more. Uh-huh. How uh, did you uh, take care of him? With a knife. Like this. Oh. Uh, can I see it? Yeah, sure, Slocum. Yeah. It's like any other knife. 
It had a friend, but I left it in Joe Gates. <laughs> you see? Just like any other night. And uh, you're just like any other cheap killer. A no-good chump. Slug him. No, you're... No. Thought you would blackmail me, hmm? I said I was a reasonable man. Not a stupid one. Blackie? Yeah? What do you think? Oh, I don't know, Mary. Uh, where would you get an antique chair? Uh, Gloria Stanton bought one, an, an authentic uh, Louis XIV chair at an auction gallery for only $15. Oh, she really? was later offered $100 for it. A hundred dollars for a second-hand chair? Well, Blackie, it was an antique. Oh, I don't care what. Louis the Fourteenth sat on it years ago. Okay, but can anybody sit on it today? <laughs> oh, Blackie. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Mary. Say, Harry Slocum runs one of those auction rooms. Hmm? Who's Harry Slocum, friend of yours? No, no, he's a character who somehow manages to miss being put in jail. Oh. He comes mighty close to it. And he runs an auction room. Yeah, mm-hmm. as a front for something illegal. Oh? I don't know what it is. <laughs> but... You know, wanting to buy a chair will give me an excuse to snoop around Slocum's auction room. After all, how far apart can iniquity and antiquity be? Are there any more bids for this delicate set of bone china? Now, my last bid is $100. Do I hear 110 Do I hear 110 all right, then, going once for a hundred, going twice for a hundred, gone to the gentleman in the third row. Oh, good. Thank you. And that's all for this morning, folks. We'll see you again tomorrow. Hey, boss, I got rid of the suckers. What busy one? Too much, Claire. I don't get the double talk, boss. And busy didn't get what he wanted. Hey, who's that on the floor? It's busy. Yes, we can't leave him there. Cliff, help me get him into this barrel. And then what? We're going to take the barrel down to my boat, and we're going to drop Beezy in the barrel into the water. Oh. Any more questions, Cliff? Hey, Alan. Yes, Inspector Faraday. You found all these identifications on the body? Yes, sir. Guy in the bus said the body hadn't been touched by any sights here. Mm. Nothing was taken. Of course something was taken. What? There was no identification on him. Oh? No fingerprint record on him. There oh. were no laundry or cleaning marks on his clothes. So? Because all his stuff was brand new. Well? And who was he? I don't know. And yeah, what about the person who discovered the body? Well, that was an elderly couple. But the guy let him get away when he went to call us. Great. The guy is stabbed to death in the middle of a crowded bus. No identification, no nothing. That's right. You know, the only thing good about this case is Boston Blackie isn't on it. Hey, boss, how much further? A little more, Cliff. I want to get beyond the coast patrol. Oh, I don't like it. Suppose they catch it. They won't. Yeah, but if they make a stop, they'll find Beezy's body on his boat. I don't like it, I tell you. I should have left you in the auction room, Cliff. Who would think of looking in a barrel for a body? Nobody. I can't help it. I still don't like him. I didn't like killing him, but it had to be done. It's because he killed Joe Gates for me. He tried to blackmail me. All right, Cliff, you can cut the motor. What now, boss? Help me roll this barrel over to the side. Okay. Now, wait. Hold it. Huh? I'll push it in the water here. What are you doing with that gun, boss? I'm going to ventilate this barrel. What? Hey, you going crazy? See, how are you shooting in that barrel? Beezy's dead, you know that. What's the idea? I'm just making sure that Beezy's body doesn't float to the surface after we dump it. Ah. Oh. With all those holes in the barrel, it'll sink right to the bottom. And I want Beezy to be gone a long time. Uh-huh. <laughs> okay, Cliff, lift. Here he goes. All right, easy now. I don't want to stop him over with the barrel. Okay, I got it. I rest it on the rail. Yeah. Uh. Now, let's get this over with. Okay, Cliff. Now, do I hear any more bids for this genuine antique barrel? <laughs> no? <laughs> well, going once, going twice, 
Oh, <laughs> so long, Beezy. All right, Cliff, let's get out of here. Oh, oh, Blackie, the auction gallery's closed. In the middle of the day, Mary, something's wrong here. Huh? Must be another entrance. Huh? Come on. Well, uh, I suppose somebody's in there. Well, you want to buy a chair, don't you? Well, sure. Oh, here's the side door. Oh, is it locked? Well, if it is, I'm not going to be for long. <laughs> and there we are. Well, be careful. Hmm. This is dark. Yeah, it sure is. Nobody in? It's all ours. Blackie, I, I smell paint. Okay. Watch where you're going now. Yeah. Follow me. Okay. Be careful now. Mm-hmm. Oh, God. What's the matter? Oh, I think I got some paint on my sleeve. Oh, hold it. Here's a light switch. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Shade of green looks uh, rather well with your dress, Mary. Oh, please look around and let's get out of here. <laughs> okay. Oh. Hey, this place is loaded with stuff. All the dishes, and tables, and lamps. Mm, uh, there's some chairs. Hold it, Mary. Hmm? In front of you on the floor. Oh, looks like blood. It might be. And whoever put it there doesn't have much left. Oh, somebody must have been in a hurry, Blackie. He left his hat there, too. Yeah. There's paint on the hat. The same color as on the door frame up uh-huh. there. It must have been on the tall side. Initials inside the band, uh, B.J. B.J.? Huh. Mary, I think this B.J. left his blood, his hat, and his life here. Uh-oh, what are you going to do? Call Faraday. Might as well put him to work on this. See any phone? Uh, yeah. On the desk there behind you. Oh, thanks. Sixty-one Street. See anything else, Mary? No. No, I don't. Oh, nothing that'll help us, that is. Homicide, Faraday. This is Blackie, Inspector. Have you found any bodies lately? What am I, a ghoul? Sometimes I wonder. Mm. I don't have any body. Uh, you have no head either, so that's abnormal enough. Oh. Uh, what about the dead body you've got down at the headquarters right now? Hey, were you on that sightseeing bus? Oh, is that where you found him? As if you didn't know. Well, have you identified him yet? We're working on it. Good. Look, Blackie. Faraday, his, his, his initials are B.J. Oh, well, that makes everything nice and easy. There can't be more than a million people with those initials. Well, look, you've got to do some work, you know. Sure. Who else? I can tell you what the body looks like. He looks like he was dead. Okay, genius, I'm listening. He's about six foot one and wears a hat size uh, uh, seven and an eight. Yeah. I got news for you, genius. What? The corpse is five four. His head size is six and a half. Huh? And goodbye, genius. I'm busy. <laughs> Premium quality, yes, sir. Premium quality that is yours to enjoy at no premium in price. Now, that's something worth remembering. But every time you pour your glass of champagne velvet, you're reminded that you're enjoying a real premium quality beer at no premium in price. You know, of course, that more costly malt and grain, higher priced hops and more careful and costly brewing methods are all a part of C.V.'s famous million-dollar formula. So C.V. has to have unmistakable premium quality. C.V.'s flavor tells you all of that. It's bright and sparkling, light and lively from foam to finish, with the rich, robust, and full-bodied flavor of a real honest-to-goodness beer. Real premium quality beer. But that's not all. It has a clear, clean taste, given it by controlled aging. A taste that makes you sure it's pure. And it's smooth, 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 just as smooth. And now, back to Boston Blackie. Beezy Jones, a killer, trails Joe Gates on a sightseeing bus and stabs him to death. When Beezy tries to get more money for the job from Boss Slocum, owner of an auction room... Slocum kills Beezy and dumps him in the ocean. Because Mary wants to buy a chair, Blackie uses this as a pretext to search Slocum's place. Blackie finds a puddle of blood and a hat with the initials B.J. in it. Blackie calls Inspector Faraday, but Faraday is working on the murder of Joe Gates, and Beezy's death has not as yet been reported. As we return to our story, Homer and Matilda Fosdick the elderly couple who discovered Joe's body on the sightseeing bus 
are coming to see Inspector Parrott. Come along, Homer. All right, Matilda. Inspector Faraday's office is right down here in his car there. Oh, Matilda, do you think we should? Oh, it's our duty. Well, I suppose so. There's a murderer running loose, and we must help the inspector catch him. Well, I hope we do. Here's the office. Come in. Inspector Faraday? You know, he isn't just now. Then what are you doing in his office? Well, I'm waiting for him. Can I help you? Yeah, well, we're here to see the justice is done. We are going to help the inspector solve the murder. Well, up till now, that's been my exclusive privilege. Matilda, don't you recognize this man? No, uh... He's Boston Blackie. <laughs> well, so he is. <laughs> Wait till the girl in cozy corner here about oh, this. Okay. <laughs> you must be helping the inspector find the murderer, that nice young man on the sightseeing bus. Oh, were you on that bus? Oh, we sat right behind the young man. Yes, and we were the ones who discovered he was dead. Yeah. Now, we figured that that young man must have been stabbed to death by the fellow sitting next to him. Well. And we saw that other man. Didn't we, Homer? Well, we certainly did. You saw the other man? Did you get a good look at him? I should say we did. Well, he was anything. a big man with a scar on the left side of his face. Yes. And he had dark hair. And he was wearing a gray felt hat with a snap rim. You found the man? Uh, no, uh, just a hat. Oh. oh. Now think hard, will you please? Uh, did this man... With a scar. I have bushy eyebrows. Yes. 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 Blackie, you know the killer. I think I do. He's Beezy Jones. He's a cheap hood. A uh, cheap hood. See, Homer, see, I told you we'd help solve the case. Well. Isn't that right, Blackie? <laughs> Not quite. You see, uh, somebody killed Beezy. Uh. Now we have to find the killer's killer. Oh. <laughs> for me, boss. Cliff. The next time I won't miss. Cliff, you gone crazy. Put that gun down. No. You ain't gonna get rid of me like you did Beasy. Now, where did you get such a fool idea? That's the way you operate. I know you. First Beasy kills Joe Gates and you kill Beasy so nobody can trace it back to you. So what? Now you're gonna kill me because I know about Beasy and Joe. That'll be a sap, Cliff. I need you. Yeah. I trust you. Put that gun down. No, no. You're not gonna stuff me in an old barrel. Oh, of course I'm not now, Cliff. Uh, go on. Put that gun down. Oh, no. You're my right-hand man, yeah. Cliff. I trust you. Sure. I need you, Cliff. Well, well, that's better. I don't know. Cliff, I couldn't kill you. After all, I don't have Joey or Beezy anymore. That's right. You're my right-hand man. I'm the only one that's left. Blackie, what are you doing behind my desk? I just wanted to see how the eye glass operates, Faraday. What kept you? What kept me? Yeah. Well, I'll tell you. It's like this. We've been trying to identify the body we found on the bus. Any luck? Yeah. We managed to get results once in a while. Corpse is Joe Gates. I know who killed him. Same way you identified a corpse you never saw? Mm, well, I Look, Blackie, why don't you take a vacation from being a pest? Beat it. Relax, Faraday. I'm a taxpayer, and headquarters is civic property. Besides, the elderly couple who found Gates dead in the bus were just here. Yeah, well, where are they now? I sent them home. You what? They told me everything they knew. They described a guy sitting next to Gates on the bus, and I'm sure it was Beezy Jones. Oh, why didn't you say so? Now all we have to do is find Beezy Jones. We have our case. Well, not quite. Why not? Beezy's dead. Remember I thought your corpse had the initials BJ? Oh, so that was your corpse. All right, where is it? Well, I don't know. You see, I was doing some investigating in the back of Slocum's office. Oh, Slocum, but... where does he come into this? Now, what are you talking about? If I... you'll stop making so much noise, maybe you'll learn something. Okay, teacher, go ahead. But it better be good. It is. I found blood in the back of Slocum's place, and near the blood, a hat with the initials B.J. in it. Yeah, so? So, Slocum is supposed to be running a legitimate auction yeah, room. Yeah, yeah. But I think it's a front for stolen goods. There's your case, Faraday. Where? Gates tried to pull some kind of a stunt, so Slocum hired B.J. to take care of him. So... And then Slocum killed B.J. Yeah. It's all tied in with this racket in the auction room. Yeah. Why don't you investigate Slocum's play, Faraday? Maybe you'll find auctions speak louder than words. Oh, well, we still haven't found a chair, Blackie. And Faraday still is looking for a killer. Yeah. Look, Mary, I think I can wind up this case, but oh. I need your help. How about it? Well, I, I did want to get back to my place and change his dress. Well, well, what do you want me to do? 
You ought to go to Slocum. Yeah. And pose as B.C. Jones's girlfriend. Hmm, just call me Mabel. Well, that's the idea. Yeah. Uh, tell him B.C. told you all about the racket, mm-hmm. uh, the auction room being a front for stolen goods and so forth, and, and, and B.C. taking care of Joe Gates, of yeah. course. And tell him B.C. kept a record of all his work. You mean a, a dial? Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, some sort of a little record book. Mm-hmm. And he's left it in your apartment, yeah. just in case anything happens to him. Yeah, I get it. Now, your job is to get him to come to your apartment after that little book. Oh, yeah. I'll do the rest. <laughs> Rollins. Yes, sir. Uh, bring in that sightseeing guide, will you? Yes, Inspector. Okay, you. Come on in. Yeah, sure. Gee, Inspector, I'm sorry I haven't been able to tell you more, but I, I couldn't help it if those people ran away when I went to call you. Yeah, sit down. Yes, sir. Uh, now, as I... Okay. If you saw any of the people who were on the bus, would you recognize them? Oh, I sure would. I got a photographic memory. Mm. See it once? I always remember it. Yeah. Uh, Rollins, get me those photographs. Well, I got them right here. Here you are, sir. Thanks. Now, you say you got a photographic memory. You remember this face? The man with the scar? Yeah, right here. Yeah, yeah, he was on a bus. He sat uh, right next to the guy who was killed. Okay, you can go now. That's all? Yeah, thanks, and so long. Oh, you're welcome. Ben Rollins, looks like Blackie was right. It was B.C. Jones who killed Joe Gates. Now all I got to do is figure out what happens next. Can I help you, lady? I'm, um, Mr. Slocum. Well, we're not open for business today. Tomorrow. No, my business is private. And it can't wait. Oh. Well, down there, his office door is open. Thanks. Hello? What do you want? Mr. Slocum? Yeah. Beasy sent me. Beasy? Come in, close that door. Okay, now what's your story, sister? My name's Mabel Warren, and Beasy and I are going to be married. And he said he was coming here this morning to get paid for taking care of Joe for you. How did you know that? Let go of my arm. Beasy told me everything. He even kept a record of all his deals. You don't say. And I got it. Just in case anything happens to Beasy. You almost uh, had me fooled. Huh? You've been here before. That uh, green paint on your sleeve. You must have been around this morning after Beasy and I left. I don't know what you're talking about. I do, and I recognize you. You're Mary Wesley, I... Boston Blackie's girlfriend. Oh, I... Clap! Clap! <laughs> you're crazy. Call me, boy? Yeah, I got a job for you. Well, I'm still painting that chair. I can wait. Uh, let go of me. No, I'm not Mary Wesley. I told you my I'll name take was... Take it Ma- easy, Miss Wesley. <laughs> Cliff, Isn't this it? is Boston Blackie's girlfriend. What? I want you to take care of her. Oh, no. Uh, Cliff, I'm the boss, remember? I don't care. I give the orders. After all, you're my first assistant, and I trust you, remember? Here's a guy. I don't kill no dames, boss. That's out. Anything but that. It's either that or nothing, Cliff. I don't kill no dames. All right, then here goes nothing. No, boss, no! Oh, you... You killed him. You shouldn't have said no to me. I'm the boss, you see. I give the orders. Ah, yeah. don't try to get away. Well, what are you going to do? First, you're going to help me get Cliff's body in a barrel and onto my boat. Oh, no, look. Oh, I got Beezy's diary in my oh, apartment. Oh, stop that. Let's We're not go. going near your apartment. This is one of Blackie's tricks. But, brother, did it backfire? I just remember this, Miss Wesley. Yeah. I'm not afraid to use this gun, so don't try to run. Blackie will take care of you. Blackie is in your apartment waiting for me to show. Oh, yeah? You didn't fool me. Oh. Now, let's get the barrel out of the side of this truck. Come on, hurry up. Go me. I don't... Now, grab one side. Go on. You're out of your mind. Is that bad? All right, now lift. I can roll this barrel down the gang, black and on the boat myself, so I'll take care of you right now. Oh? Nice of you, Slocum. Blackie! Oh, Oh, Blackie, am I glad to see you, but look out, he's got a gun. Yeah, and I can use it too, Blackie. Give you a chance to show me. Go on. No. Well, I'll take care of Slocum. Yeah. He's pretty draped over that barrel. 
Oh, he sure does. Are you all right, Mary? Yes, Blackie, but how did you get here? You were supposed to meet me at my apartment. Well, when you left, I I remembered the paint on your sleeve and realized that a Slocum saw it. He mm-hmm. put two and two together. He did, Blackie. He wanted one of his gunmen, Cliff, to kill me, but Cliff wouldn't, so Slocum killed him and stuffed him into this barrel. Uh-huh. It was awful. Now, take it easy, Mary. Yeah. How, uh, how did you get here? Well, when I realized what might happen, uh-huh. I got down to the auction room just in time to see you drive here with Slocum. Oh, boy, am I glad you did. Uh, what do we do now? Call Inspector Faraday and tell him we have his killer over a barrel. <laughs> Make mine CV, because for me, there is no finer beer. And it's just as smooth. Make mine CV. So many folks who know good beer when they taste it have said just that. Time after time, that Champagne Velvet is not only the leading beer by far in its home state of Indiana, but it is preferred by particular people everywhere that it is sold. There is only one reason for that, and that is flavor. The bright, sparkling, light and lively flavor of a real premium quality beer. Premium quality that costs you no premium in price. The rich, robust, and full-bodied flavor of real honest-to-goodness beer. And the clear, clean taste that makes you sure it's pure. So make yours CV. Because for you, there is no finer beer. You're sure it's pure, and it's just as smooth. And now, here is a preview of what happens next week. Oh, Mary, Blackie, what are you doing home on such a gorgeous day? We're waiting for you to come over so we can take off for a drive in the country. Oh, well, wow. what are we waiting for? Not a thing. Come on, let's... Uh, you want me to answer, Blackie, or should we ignore it? I'd better take it. Otherwise, I'll be wondering all day who is calling. <laughs> Hello. Hello. That's funny. Hmm? What's the matter? There was somebody on the phone, and when he heard my voice, he hung up. Yeah, you know what they say about uh, when a man answers. <laughs> oh, good night. Now there's somebody at the door. Well, I'll take it this time. Yes? What? Blackie? There's nobody out here. Oh, but there must be. Well, the hall's empty. Well, look, here's an envelope on the floor. Well, Brian, the bell must have left it and run. No, let's see what it is. Come on, hurry. Okay, Mary, now take it easy. Okay, I'll jump, okay. Oh, Blackie, okay. what's in the envelope? Well, look to yourself. It's empty. First the phone rings, and nobody's at the other end. The doorbell rings, and the hall's empty. <laughs> and now this envelope with nothing in it. Yeah. And the fact that nothing is in it means something's going on. <laughs> Cerebral Cinema hopes you have enjoyed this movie of the mind.